Hey, uh, you came in? Hey, they only put one waterproof zipper on this backpack. Get set up, we're making a video. We're making a video right now. Leading the pack. We started Big Agnes over 20 years ago. We just wanted to make great gear to get people out camping. It was a simple idea rooted in providing comfort to brave souls, sleeping in the backcountry and keeping them atop their sleeping pad. Who could have imagined that two decades later, we would have a trophy case full of awards I'm not so sure they're going to have an award for this backpack. That was that was pretty brutal. <laughs> it's it's not that brutal, I promise. All right. So this is the Big Agnes Prospector 50 liter backpack, brand new backpack to the market. I bought this backpack maybe a month ago to take it to Texas uh, to Big Ben Ma Big Ben National. <laughs> National Big Ben National Park. Uh, and the biggest reason is because, um, well, one, two reasons really. It's a, a new backpack to the market, so I wanted to try it out. But then also um, it carries a little bit heavier of a load. It carries about 40 pounds. And we have a ton of camera gear that we bring. And this trip we also bring almost eight liters of water. Emmett's first backpacking trip, how, how was it? My back still hurts. Your back? <laughs> he carried eight liters of water and a little bit more camera gear than I did. So... Both of our backpacks weighed between 40 and 45 pounds, I think. Uh, the weight capacity of this backpack is about 40 pounds. So there's some things I love. There's some things that are quirky, and then there's definitely some things I absolutely hate about this backpack. We're going to get into all of it. I think we should talk about the, the things I like first. Yeah, let's start off a good note. Yeah, let's start off on a good note, okay? This is, the good, this is what I love about this backpack. First of all, I really like how it looks. I think this is a great-looking backpack. They've got a couple different colors of the backpack. Um, but I think the colors look good. Um, it's just sleek. It's nice. Uh, it's got a really nice curve to it to form fit to you. So there's just a, a lot of good things going for it as far as the look goes. So you don't feel like you're walking around with some big nerdy looking backpack on. And that's always nice. I'm trying to think of more things that I like about this. Oh, okay. There are a couple. There are a couple. So this is a top loader backpack, which is really nice. I like having backpacks that load up from the top. But one thing I really like about this backpack is the size of these water bottle pockets. These are absolutely enormous. These are probably the biggest water bottle pockets I have ever seen in any backpack. We carried a four liter water bladder in the side of this uh, backpack, which is enormous. All right, the other thing I really liked about this backpack is that it's got a full zip panel on the back, which is really, really interesting. So you open it up like this, you can get full access to the backpack. And I've just got a, a sleeping bag in here, Big Agnes sleeping bag, by the way, to uh, sort of fill out the backpack so you can kind of see what it looks like. So um, but this is really nice. I didn't think this was gonna be as useful as it is, um, as it was, uh, as it would be. <laughs> it was really nice to be able to open this up and you know, get to some stuff that was towards the bottom of the backpack, things that I might have needed. All right, and then the other th thing that I really did like about this, and they call this their anatomically curved backpack panel with body mapping foam. <laughs> okay. It's just a, a back panel that is curved really nicely to fit your back anatomically, whatever that means. And it has body mapping foam, okay. Uh, they do say that this vents. It didn't vent for me at all, maybe a little bit, but man, we were sweating like crazy. And uh, so I, I was, I didn't feel vented one bit. And I, and I just had a t-shirt on. So, uh, you know, it's a good effort to try to vent, but I think backpacks that have like the uh, screen back here, so there's a gap, uh, there's several on the market. There's some made by Z-Pack, some made by Osprey. Those vent really well. Like that actually keeps the backpack off of your back. So. Uh, but as far as the comfort on my back, it was awesome. Oh, and then one more thing uh, that didn't really matter to me at all because I'm not uh, a water bladder person, but if you are the type of person that likes to carry a water bladder with you, uh, it is really nice to be able to open this up like this and have full access to your water bladder right here. So that way, you know, if you are planning on refilling it or cleaning it or whatever, or you filter directly into it, you can just, you know, pull it right out, put it right back in. You don't have to like empty your whole backpack. These little clips right here for guiding the water tube uh, for, from the bladder to you. So if that's important to you, 
It's got that here. That's really nice. Um, I did like all of the adjustment po points that are on here. There's you know lots of tensioners, lots of ways to adjust the backpack. That was nice. And um, that's about where it ends. That's about all I liked about this backpack. Now we're going to get into some what I call our uh, head scratchers. Like, why did they do that? Pretty much like any other backpack out there on the market. This is not a waterproof backpack. Now the material is water resistant, definitely for sure. Uh, it's a thick denier nylon, but it's not seam sealed, and that's typical for a backpack like this. But then they've got one back zipper here, which is nice. It's nice to have a, a separate pocket here for some organization, so you could put like your, you know, your first aid kit in here, or uh, maybe a water filter, something you want to get to quickly uh, along the trail if you want to stop. You don't have to empty out your whole backpack. But this zipper is a waterproof zipper, <laughs> so. I'm not really sure why this is a waterproof zipper because absolutely nothing else on the backpack is waterproof. It's just like some guy was like, hey, we got some waterproof zippers laying around. We should throw them on one of the backpacks to get rid of them. What do you think? Yeah, that's a great idea. I mean, all right, so they've got a waterproof zipper back there. A little bit of a head scratcher, I'm not really sure. I mean, I suppose it's nice, okay, if you want to keep this pocket only dry. And it's not even dry because it's not seam sealed. Anyway, but then on the hip belt pocket, they have just a regular zipper. So if I wanted to have a waterproof zipper, it would be here because that's where I'm gonna put maybe a headlamp or a cell phone or you know other things that, maybe some snacks, things that I don't wanna get wet, it's gonna go in a hip belt pocket. So really interesting that they would only put a waterproof zipper here when nothing else on the backpack is waterproof. But then along with these hip belt pouches and a lot of people may like this, but very interesting, like head scratcher, totally. These are removable hip belt pouches. First off, with removable hip belt pouches, they're very difficult to keep like in place, so they're almost always impossible to open up with one hand. And it's really nice to be able to open up your hip belt pouch with one hand, instead of having to reach around with two hands uh, to get open it up with one, uh, grab a snack out, just, you know, be able to open it up with one hand, zip it back up with one hand is really nice. And because this moves around on here like this, it's just hard to do with one hand. But then why make them removable? <laughs> I mean, the only reason I can think that you'd want a removable hip belt pouch is because you're trying to go super ultra light. But this is not an ultra light backpack. This is a very lightweight backpack for what it is. It's only a little over three pounds, which isn't bad for all the features that you get. But at that point, just make your hip belt pouches attached, like permanently attached. And People are gonna want that. If you're adding all of this extra feature, all of this extra organization for the rest of the backpack, I mean, really, just, I'm not a fan of uh, detachable or removable hip belt pouches. I think they're a complete waste. I want them on, I don't ever want them off. Uh, they're just very handy to have and they have nominal weight penalty to even have them on there. Another major head scratcher for me, uh, and this was almost a deal breaker for the trip, honestly. I was, uh, if this, uh, if I didn't figure out an alternative way to do this, I would have totally taken a different backpack because it was extremely important for us to be able to do what I'm about to talk about, which is to be able to attach gear to the top or the bottom of the pack. Now you can do it, obviously, there's a lot of different attach points here for carabiners and ways to attach different cordage and lines so you maybe have a tent that you wanna strap to the top of the pack, you can certainly do that. But why didn't they include the straps? Um, most backpacks like this, as a matter of fact, all backpacks that I own, that have a, a top loading pack that rolls down have straps that are built into the backpack that I can wrap over the top of the backpack to say, attach my chair. Or in this case, we needed to attach a big water bladder to carry way more water than what we typically do. And I didn't wanna to have to put it inside of my backpack because I was worried about it leaking. And so I wanted to have it right on top. And I wasn't able to do that. So at the last minute I was like, wow, we're not gonna be able to use this backpack. I'm not even gonna be able to take this to test it in the one location that I wanted to take it and test it to. And then even along the bottom, there's no way to attach anything other than you have to use your own cordage and figure out your own way of tying something off. So at this price point, uh, they should definitely have included some type of a strap um, that's already built into the backpack to be able to attach a sleeping pad, a tent, something on the back of the backpack. I wanna talk about one more head scratcher about this backpack. It comes with a really interesting, in my opinion, completely gimmicky piece of gear, which is, where did I put it? Oh, here it is. It comes with a trash can. <laughs> uh, 
a trash can. So this is, in my opinion, completely gimmicky. Uh, I would never take this out on trail. The biggest reason is, yes, I totally, leave no trace, absolutely, I wanna carry out my trash, 100%, I always do carry out my trash, but I'm not gonna bring a separate trash can for that. Um, and I'm not gonna reuse it either, because if I have food bags that I've eaten out of, dehydrated food bags or whatever, I'm not gonna wanna just toss them in here and then this just gets disgusting and gross, then I'm gonna have to worry about it all the time because of the smell of it. I'm gonna first put it inside of a Ziploc bag and then put it in here, but then why would I need this? I've just got a Ziploc bag for my garbage, so total gimmick, not sure why they included this. I get, you know, they're just trying to appeal maybe to people who are leave no trace type people, which I am, but yeah, this is a total head scratcher, not sure why they even have this at all. All right, now we're gonna get to some of the things that I absolutely detest about this backpack. It's pretty much things I hate. So first off, this back panel is ridiculously small. Um, it is not large enough. So if you are planning on putting bigger gear items back here, it, it does stretch a little bit, but it only stretches so far to where you're gonna have to push in things inside of the backpack. So this to me is not big enough at all. Let's just make this stretch here just like you made the water bottle pockets a lot stretchier. Like just mimic this over here, put your cool design on there, put your logo on there, Big Agnes, whatever you wanna do to make it look cool in the back. Maybe you were all concerned about this and having your logo there, I don't know. But this is definitely not big enough. Another thing I absolutely hated about this backpack is that it squeaked when I hiked. And Emmett, you can attest this, am I right? Yeah. So even when I was breathing, if I breathed in and out, you could hear it go, <gasps> and it would just <clears throat> the entire time I hiked. All day long. All day long. It drove me absolutely insane. Now, I will say to possibly the fault of where we were hiking that it was extremely dusty, so maybe that had something to do with dust getting in somewhere to cause like a squeaking problem, but man, it drove me absolutely insane. I've only had one other backpack do that ever and uh it drove me nuts so i was almost ready to just like i'm never backpacking with this again it was that annoying. and the last thing that was honestly a deal breaker for me was the fact that the hip belt um is too big it's simply too big i have a 32 inch waist which i think is a pretty standard waist for a lot of guys i had this hip belt cranked all the way down i mean completely down and yes if you go to their website, they tell you how to fit this. I picked out and purchased the correct torso. I have a long torso, I'm almost 22 inches. So this is the long torso or the large backpack or whatever you wanna call it. Uh, so I did, by Big Agnes's standards, uh, decide how to fit this backpack for me. And I followed their video on their website, how to adjust it, how to make sure it fit properly. And this hip belt is just simply too big. It was so big that I had it cranked out all the way down and it was still slipping down. So I was constantly having to put it up higher, put it up higher, put it up higher, to the point where my shoulders, after just maybe five miles with all that weight, was really, really wearing down on me. Now you may be saying, well, Dan, that's, it was going down because you had 45 pounds of weight in there. That's uh, heavier than the backpack is rated for. Well, by the end of the trip, it was still doing it. We were well under 40 pounds because I had drank a ton of water. We had drank almost 15 pounds worth of water by that point. So well below the capacity of this backpack and it was still doing it. So that was a complete deal breaker for me. I would not even be able to use this backpack again for that reason. Uh, the hip belt is so important on a backpack because that's where that weight needs to be sitting. It needs to be on your hips. That's the whole point of weight distribution from a frame to your hips so that weight comes off of your shoulders. And it didn't. It sat on my shoulders that whole time, so it was very, very uncomfortable. So, <clears throat> would I take this backpack ever again? Probably not. Um, I probably would not take this backpack again. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recommend uh, a backpack sort of in the same realm of this backpack. So this backpack is for the person who wants a lightweight backpack that can carry a heavier load, that has a ton of organization. And for that, this backpack should do its job. For me, it didn't really work out, obviously. So what I would do is I would recommend, I would recommend this one. This is the Outdoor Vitals Shadow Light 60 backpack. This backpack weighs over a pound less. So this is just under two pounds. It's got a very similar size frame in it, internal frame. It's got 
a ton of features similar to this. In other words, I can open this backpack up all the way all the way down without having to open up the top lid. It's a top loader backpack. It's got extra pockets for organization. So this backpack uh, doesn't have removable hip belt pouches, doesn't have weird waterproof zippers where, when the backpack's not even waterproof. And it does have straps to strap onto the top of the backpack, like your chair or water bladder or anything that you wanna strap onto the top of the backpack. And this backpack is rated for the same weight <laughs> loadout as the Big Agnes one, which this is the backpack that Emmett used. And Emmett, how did this backpack do for you? It was really good. Obviously at the beginning, um, we, I was carrying so much water that it was just gonna be heavy regardless of whatever backpack I was using. But uh, after we lightened it up a lot, it was it was completely fine and very comfortable. Okay, cool. So this also has one of the best hip belts I have ever used on a backpack. So anyway, my point is I'm showing you this backpack because if you're looking for a full featured lightweight backpack that can carry a heavier load that's got a ton of organization, I would honestly choose this back way before I chose that back and the backpack. And that backpack is actually more expensive. This is $30 less. So anyway, Big Agnes, um, you tried, you really tried. And I think you did a pretty decent job for out of the gate. So hopefully maybe uh, those of you that have bought this backpack, please comment below. Tell me if you've had the same issues that I've had with it. And these are good videos for companies to see because then they can make real changes to backpacks and see what consumers are really uh, saying about their backpacks. So anyway, <laughs> If you like this video, let me know in the comments below. Hit that like button. Also, subscribe for more, and we will see you guys on the next one.